the Georgian Theatre in Richmond, North Yorkshire. This beautiful theatre, which in its varied history has been an auction room, a corn chandler's store and a wine vault, has been carefully restored to its former glory. The theatre was built by actor-manager Samuel Butler and opened on September the 2nd, 1788, with a production that started with Butler himself reading a prologue. Since its reopening in 1963, the stage has seen productions starring actors as diverse as Dame Edith Evans, Bernard Breslau, Peggy Ashcroft and Wilfred Pickles. But by far the most famous man ever to have trod the boards in this tiny theatre must be that great 19th century tragedian, Edmund Keane. By all accounts, Keane was a fiery individual whose naturalistic style of acting took the country by storm. His personal life, too, was full of confusion and contradiction. Though he was born to lowly parents, he always maintained that he was the son of a nobleman, and he blamed everyone but himself for his shortcomings. A play, Edmund Keane, by Raymond Fitzsimmons, has been specially written for actor Ben Kingsley. And what better place to set an excerpt from that play than the dressing room under the stage in the Georgian theatre, a dressing room that Keane himself undoubtedly used. Yes, I have often heard my mother say, I came into this world with my legs forward. The midwife wondered, and the women cried, Good heaven, bless us, he's born with teeth. And so I was, which plainly signified that I should snarl and bite and play the dog. Have you ever starved? I have. For 10 years, I starved in the provinces. 10 long years before I was recognized. Now, don't tell me other actors took even longer before getting a London reputation. They weren't me. Year after year, I had to play second, third, even fourth, the men who weren't fit to be on the same stage. It happened in every company I joined. Managers always had a reason for stopping me playing leading roles. First, they said I was too young, then they said I was too small, but it wasn't my age, it wasn't my height. They had to thwart me because those were their instructions. Well, they pushed other actors forward, actors who had an infinitesimal fraction of my talent, let alone breeding. Do you know who I am? Have you any idea who my father is? I am the son of the Duke of Norfolk. Something to be proud of, yes, but the relationship has brought me more enemies than friends. Enemies in high places. They even put out the story that I'm the son of a part-time whore and a drunken Irishman. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. My aunt, Charlotte, well, I had to call her aunt. This had to do with matters of state. She was the Duke's mistress. That is, until he discarded her and got her a job in the Drury Lane Company. I never saw much of her as a child. She was always at the theatre. Anyways, I was off on my own most of the time, living wild, stealing food, sleeping in trees. She always came after me. I fought and struggled. She dragged me back with a rope tied round my waist. <laughs> <laughs> then she lashed me to the bed. I always escaped. So she had a dog collar fettered round my neck with her name and address on it. <laughs> when she was working, she'd take me on a lead to Drury Lane and tie me up backstage like a dog. It was like a dog that I first saw Drury Lane, the theatre I was to immortalise. Playing Keen here is a marvellous experience for me because it, it opens up all kinds of locked information that, that has not hitherto been accessible to me. And thrilling to, to be in the dressing room that he obviously used himself, to know um, how small, there's a little fire grate in the dressing room, so he probably sat by the fire and warmed himself. Um, there are stone stairs, so I can trace the steps that he must have taken with his heart pounding with nerves, as, as all our hearts do on, on, on nights before plays. So that, that, that is um, uh, something that there is no substitute for. I get the feeling that, that uh, there's a little frail bridge being built between myself and the person I'm playing, that, that whatever dust particles that are left in the air from that person is actually, are actually coalescing and coming together for a little while 
and looking after a few things that aren't normally looked after. And it's, it's very exciting. I've had an opportunity today to use Mr. Keane's snuff box and um, any artifact like that is, uh, is endowed with all sorts of auras and, and stories and traditions and where that snuff box went and the conversations that it has overheard are, you know, are wonderful to speculate on. And it was, it was glorious for me to be able to use that and also to go to the um, museum here very rare, very special museum that contains in it um, a piece of highly detailed scenery. To our eyes, perhaps rather dimly lit in our age of electrics. It was lit by a wick floating in fish oil. Um, floating, that, therefore they called it the floats. The footlights were called floats. Um, the light was relatively brighter on stage than in the auditorium, but it was only relative. And therefore the attention to texture and detail and colour in makeup and in costume and in scenery was, was very fine, very fine. Not abstract, not representational like we can indulge ourselves in now, but highly specific and that's lovely to see in the museum, beautifully preserved. Marvellous old theatre.